Hey there, in this video, we're going to look at complex numbers. And to start off with, we'll do a quick overview of complex numbers. Then we'll look at the standard notations used for complex numbers. Then look at how you convert from one form of those of that notation to another. And finally, do a few examples. To start off with, if you are unfamiliar with complex numbers, check out the links in the description below. That's a much better starting point than this video for complex numbers. So just as a quick overview, a complex number is an element in a number system that consists of a real part and an imaginary part. And this real part is, a, is just a real number, which can be represented by a horizontal line. And the imaginary part is a real number multiplied by the square root of negative 1. And that square root of negative 1 is just, a de is just used to denote that it's an imaginary number. And it is often abbreviated as the letter I, which is commonly used in math or physics, or the letter J, which is used more in electrical engineering. And the imaginary part is orthogonal to the real part, and so it is drawn as a number line in the vertical direction. And this combination of the real part and the imaginary part makes up a number plane. And this number plane, or Cartesian plane, is called the complex plane when we're dealing with these complex numbers. Now, any point in this plane can be, can be represented in a couple of different ways. The first, ways, the first way, let's just call this point P, is by using, just, is using the coordinates, the Cartesian coordinates. So if this, is, if this point P is up B in the imaginary axis and across A in the, in the real axis, this point is AB, the representation of that point in the, the complex number notation is P is equal to A, which is the, the value of the, the real part, part, plus B, which is the value of the imaginary part, times I to denote that it is the, the imaginary part. The point can also be represented in polar notation. So polar notation uses the distance from the origin to the point, and it uses the angle that the line segment makes between that line and the positive part of the real axis. And let's call that phi. So if we call this length r and the angle that it's making phi, then that p can also be represented by r with the angle of phi. And the angle, don't, the angle notation is this little triangle with the angle that the, the line is making. So we have two different ways to represent that point. And if you take a look, you can see that it's the conversion between those two different methods of representing that point P is fairly simple with just a little bit of trigonometry. So let's just take this part and redraw it just to, to see where the trigonometry comes into play. So there's the R, the distance from the origin up to the point P. And then we've got this distance A the real part of the the real part of the point and then we have this distance b i've redrawn it over here but that's it's going to be the same distance as as this is and that's that's the imaginary part and then we have the angle between the line segment and the positive real axis that we're calling phi and we can see that this is a right triangle and so with that right triangle that value of r we can use pythagoras theorem r squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, and therefore r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. And with phi, we can see that the tangent of phi is equal to b over a, and therefore phi is equal to the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of b over a. So a very simple conversion if you already have the rectangular coordinates. It's very easy to convert from the rectangular or the Cartesian coordinates into the polar coordinates. So what if you want to go the other way? What if you already know the polar coordinates and you want to figure out the rectangular or the, the Cartesian coordinates? Well, let's take a look at the right triangle again. Uh, sine of phi, that's going to be equal to b over r. And the cosine of phi, well, that's going to be equal to a over r. So with just some simple rearranging here, we get b is equal to r sine phi, and a is equal to r cos phi. So that's, that's the conversion. If I know the polar coordinates, if I know the r and the phi, then I can do that really simple conversion. 
All right, well, let's do a simple example. We have a point that's at eight on the real axis and 12 on the imaginary axis. So that in the rectangular coordinate form is P equals eight plus 12 I or eight plus 12. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna use J because I'm an electrical engineer. And I wanna convert it from this rectangular coordinates into the polar coordinates. Well, I need to find out what the length of the line is and what the angle it that line makes with the, with the real axis. Well, R will be equal to the square root of eight squared plus 12 squared. And that works out to 14.42. And the angle is equal to the arctan of 12 over eight. And I plug that into my calculator and I get 33.69 degrees. Okay, let's do another example. And we've got another point here and let's actually call it P2. And P2 in polar coordinates is equal to seven with an angle of negative 51 degrees. And I want to convert this into rectangular coordinates. Well, the imaginary or the real part of that point is equal to seven times the cosine of 51 degrees. I'll plug that into a calculator and we get 4.4. And the imaginary part of that line B is equal to seven sine 51 degrees. And that works out to negative 5.44. So P2 in rectangular coordinates then is equal to 4.4 minus 5.44 J. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you wanna find out more information about complex numbers, check the links in the description below. There you'll find a website with all sorts of information, not just on complex numbers, but on electrical and electronic circuits of all kinds. There are tutorials, there's practice problems, there's a textbook, all sorts of things that can, can help you understand electrical and electronic circuits. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.